I think that uh, she had a vision of the women's emancipation. Uh, she was ahead of her time, and uh, in that sense also, not only was she ahead of her time, but she had like a vehicle, Chatelaine, in which you know she could pass on some some of her great ideas. So I think, in a sense, um, her um, if if we were to have like you know a, um, an assessment of her uh, contribution to uh, Canadian feminism, I would say she's played a very important role. She's touched uh, not only women, but she's touched men. She's touched. Uh, in society in many different ways. Certainly, through uh, her uh, duties at uh, Chatelaine, she had like you know she had uh, opportunities to pass on some ideas, and uh, I, I think her contribution around um, uh, voting issues and proportional representation are very important because they raised one issue, which is what is the role of women in Canadian politics, and in that sense, uh, her interest in proportional representation was uh, tied to uh, her assessment that it was important to have more women in, in Canadian politics. Now, I'm mentioning that because I, I think that she um, she started uh, to lobby on these issues, and there are women today who are still, like, you know, uh, surfing on her wave. And, uh, for example, there's one group, uh, Equal Voice, and uh, I think that uh, for a group such as Equal Voice, whose main mission is to ensure that one day there will be 50% of women elected in Canada. So for that group, uh, work done by women like Doris Sanderson is very, very important because she's raised uh, awareness on, you know, what is the problem with Canadian politics? Why are there so few women in Canadian politics? And how proportional representation can, you know, in a way, present an alternative and eventually generate uh, more women elected, uh, you know, once we implement the system. But I think she was also concerned with social justice at a more general uh, sense. And uh, the work she uh, she did on, like, abortion rights, for example, is certainly, I mean, you know, as uh, we know today that uh, there are some MPs who are raising issues about uh, abortion laws in Canada and maybe who want to you know, recriminalize abortion. So in that sense, we can go back to the work of uh, pioneers like Doris Anderson to just to reiterate the importance of maintaining, like, you know, uh, rights such as abortion for women in Canada because they've, you know, there there are women who've done work uh, on that issue before and have, who have documented the importance of, you know, access to abortion clinics for women in Canada. So, I mean, we're not starting from scratch. And the good thing also, I would say, with Doris Anderson is that because she had a vehicle, she had Chatelaine, uh, it's, group for young, it's good for young women because uh, if they want to have a sense of her, her ideas, of her work, they can, you know, there are archives, there's material, because uh, th 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 part of uh, activism within feminism in Canada has vanished. Because, I mean, there's just nothing left from that work. While those who had, like, the privilege of, of writing, you know, around their ideas, mostly like people like Doris Anderson, they could uh, have their, uh, you know, their ideas disseminated on a monthly basis and, and reach, you know, millions of women. Mm -hmm. So we, we have all this material today, so this gives us a sense of what women were going through, were thinking, you know, in the 1960s, 1970s, while for young women today, somewhere, you know, there's often the impression that uh, f feminism started in 1985 when they were born, but I mean, you know, when you you look at uh, women like Doris Anderson, you have a, a sense that, well, you know, they've been women before and have worked, uh, you know, uh, very steadily to change uh, women's conditions in, in Canada. I would say that uh, if we're talking about mainstream magazines, because I mean, you know, Chatelaine is published by Rogers and, you know, you can buy it anywhere. Um, there's nothing equivalent to Chatelaine today. And I, I think uh, at the same time, Chatelaine has evolved towards something that is not as specifically feminist as it, as it was in the 1970s, 1980s. I like. You know, I think now they um, they have to generate uh, profit, mm -hmm. and uh, I think you know their mission now is not 
uh, expressly defined by reference to feminism. And uh, they will have articles that are very powerful in terms of framing the idea of women's equality. But the term feminism is, is not a term that they will use to define you know, their mission. Because uh, feminism now doesn't make consensus. The word is like, you know, it's the F word. And, uh, and many women do not uh, connect with the term, although they agree with ideas around women's equality. So in that sense, I think Shetland is, like, is, is aware of that and is framing uh, its general ideas more in terms of like women's equality. But I mean, everybody is, is, is uh, you know, in agreement with women's equality. Stephen Harper is for women's equality. I mean, you know, all governments, conservative, liberals, are using the term women's equality. It's it's become like something almost politically neutral, you know. But at the same time, I guess, if we compare to the 1960s, 1970s, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm glad when I hear Stephen Harper says he's in favor of women's equality. I mean, you know, then, okay, fine. We're mm -hmm. going to work on that. I would say certainly that, you know, a woman who's been so influential, who's been like you know a, a journalist with that kind of high visibility for so long certainly was a role model for like younger women mostly from a generation where there were so few women who were journalists i mean you know not only was she a journalist but she she had this high visibility she had you know she had a discourse of her own she had her own ideas uh she had like you know networks of people and uh, she was running that uh, magazine that, you know, was sold to uh, millions of uh, women in Canada. So, yeah, in that sense, I think she's certainly one of these uh, important icons for women journalists today. And once again, I, I think that if you uh, just get a sense of uh, all these testimonies at her funerals, you know, of people who went there just to, to share how important she had been for, for you know, their, their life, for their career, yeah, certainly you have a sense that she's she's played a very important role. And if had she not been, you know, there uh, at that time, I think things would be different today for women uh, journalists in Canada. There's something interesting with Doris Anderson is that although she was like uh, she was English Canadian, she was also well known among uh, Francophone Quebec uh, women and Quebec feminists. You know, she was a name that. Uh, we had seen many, many times, and so I would say she she was a true Canadian in that sense, you know, able to reach not only uh, English Canadians but also uh, Quebecois, uh, Francophone, and uh, I know myself when I was young, you know, certainly Doris Anderson was a woman, and she's she's had been on so many tri tri tribunes, and you know, she uh, she had this uh, high visibility, so uh, yeah, I was uh, you know I was always interested in in, in reading on her stuff and. Uh, reading also her magazine in English, although there was like a French edition for Châtelaine. But the English edition was maybe a little more edgy than the, uh, the French one.